Make a big noise playing in the street Gonna be a big man someday You got mud on your face You big disgrace well, the 2012 Belt Buckle Bonanza Prospect Steer Show Ring B is now underway. We've got our 16 breed champions moving into the arena currently. As you can see, we've got the ABC champion there up front leading off, brought to us by Kaylee Smith. Next is the champion Brahmin, shown by Kylie Patterson, followed by the champion Brangus, Abby Christian, followed by the Brangus should be the Centra Gatutis here momentarily. That calf was also shown by Abby Christian. But uh, as you can see, they've got these uh, eared influence cattle up front here in the 16 breed format here at the, the Belt Buckle Bonanza, as we were described to by Matt Papelka. They've got uh, 16 breeds down here. They show at every different jackpot, uh, so certainly a, a unique format uh, for down here in Texas. There's the Centra Gratutis from Abby Christian there, the red and white steer. Next is the champion Simbra from Cali Ellis. Followed by the champion Angus, the young man there in the blue shirt. That uh, is Peyton Herzog. Followed by Peyton should be the champion Red Angus from Kylie Kloss. Uh, that would be a different champion from compared to Ring A. Up next is the pole, or excuse me, the champion Herford, excuse me. That's Sierra Franks. That would be a different division champion as compared to Ring A as well. There comes Colton Shackelford. Uh, he was the champion pole Herford in Ring A, so he follows it up here in Ring B as well. Followed by the champion Shorthorn, brought to us by Sage Martin. Certainly a really unique calf. That's a different champion as compared to Ring A. So we're seeing some differences in opinion here from Judge Chris Mullenix as compared to Ring A Judge uh, Gerald Buck. There's the champion Charlay from Jonathan Michael Nolte, raised by, um, I believe, Brandon Horn there, that calf. Up next is the champion Key from Cannon Goodson, followed by the champion Limousine from Stock Martin. Uh, you're seeing some differences here in the division championship. The Charlet's different. The Limousine's different. The key was the same. But here comes the champion, Main. Uh, this is a swap here. This champion uh, was from Jonathan Michael Nolte. He was reserve main in ring A. So he's going to win this ring. I think Justin Rico was reserved. So just a flop there on the pair. Um, and then uh, the champion, Simmental, coming next. Connor Chambers with the Troubadour Sired Steer that was fourth overall in ring A. Uh, the Michael Nolte main was uh, third in ring A. And then obviously here comes Stock Martin with the champion AOB, that calf sired by Monopoly, uh, raised by Brian Martin. He was grand champion steering the ring A, so we'll see if that calf can uh, uh, make the same splash here in ring B under Judge Chris Mullenix. Uh, this is certainly a great lineup here, as you can see, moving down the line. All different shapes, sizes, and colors. Really good set all the way through. Certainly as compared to Ring A, the ABC once again will be a contender from Kaylee Smith. That's a really unique calf. Once again, I believe sold by Ryan Rash. And then that pulled Herford's really, really good. The Shorthorn's a unique individual. The Charlet's super stout. The Key's a little bit different type as uh, you look at him compared to the rest of his counterparts, but certainly a really unique individual in his own right. That limousine's extremely stout there from Stock Martin. Then you see Jonathan Michael Nolte there in the light blue shirt with that super big back mane. I think he's sired by Lone Wolf. That one's really unique. I got so much shape and dimension, but still sound enough to get around the ring. And then there's that Simmental that really puts it together a ideal look Patrick package. He's really big bodied, big bone, big foot. Got some shape and dimension and still hits you hard from the side. That's a really good one there from Connor Chambers. And then obviously Stock Martin steered there to the left. Um, that Monopoly at one ring, A eh? Can't really put a hole in that one. A really unique individual. Uh, that obviously our judge in ring A, Gerald Buck, liked awful well, used him to win. So certainly a tough, tough lineup here, as we said. We'd once again like to thank all of our sponsors who make this coverage possible, including our supreme sponsor, Sullivan Supply. Be sure to check out SullivanSupply.com, as well as all of our corporate sponsors, Executive Sires, Quaker Hill Farm, Willow Springs Club Calves, FatSteer.com, Morgan Stanley Smith Barney and Garwood Cattle Company, as well as our Belt Buckle Bonanza show sponsor, Troush Farms. We really appreciate their continued support in making all this coverage possible here at the 2012 Belt Buckle Bonanza. Well, as you can see, it looks like Chris Mullenix is going to get these cattle out in the move here momentarily. The ABC there from Kaylee Smith will lead the line. As you can see, as he makes the turn there, that one is an incredible prospect. Super big foot, big bone. Just a uh, incredible ABC prospect, as we said. That one's just uh, about as different as you can find for that uh, breed. There's the Brahmin. There comes the Brangus, followed by the Santra Gatutis, 
followed by what should be the sim bra. Uh, as you can see there with the star head there, that black calf. And then following that should be the Angus, I believe, from Peyton Herzog, as you see there. That one really gets out and takes a long athletic stride. He'll certainly be a contender at Fort Worth next year as an Angus. Up next is the Red Angus from Kylie Kloss. And then next will be that champion Herford from Sierra Franks. Followed by that really stout uh, pulled uh, from Colton Shackelford. As you can see up there, there's the ABC, the Brahmin. And there's the Brangus from Abby Christian. Really get, takes a good stride there as well. Next, as you should see, here should be momentarily the Santra Gatutis once again. Abby Christian's got two steers out there. There's the Simbra. But Angus is a little bit slow to the party, it seems like. He wants to take his time moving around the ring there. He knows he's in the drive, so he wants to make sure the judge gets a look at that one. That's a really good Angus. There's the Red Angus once again, the Hereford from uh, Sierra Franks, followed by what should be there once again, that pulled Hereford champion from Colton Shackelford, sold by Bonham Show Cattle. It's a really good-looking calf. They're super big bone, really unique. There's that short horn that... Uh, I suspect he'll be a big-time player, not only here at the belt buckle, but down the road as a slick shear from Sage Martin. There's the Charlotte from Jonathan Michael Nolte. Champion Key there from Cannon Goodson. Champion Limousine from Stock Martin. And there's the champion Maine from Jonathan Michael Nolte. He's got two steers out here. That one's once again sired by Lone Wolf and raised by Brandon Horn. There's the Simmental raised by Luan Kabbalah, sired by Troubadour. And then there's the Monopoly champion AOB, shown by Stock Martin. And raise a Brian Martin show cattle. As you can see there, that one really hits you hard from the side. So high out of his neck shoulder junction. Super uh, unique profile and kind of calf there. He'll be certainly a player. He was once again champion in ring A. As we move down the line here and get this uh, unique vantage point on these steers from up here in the booth. These are really good set as uh, you would suspect here at what some would say is the toughest jackpot in Texas. The belt buckle Bonanza certainly Really appreciate uh, Sheree Caraba, Ryan Rash, and the TJLA for having us down to cover this great event. They do a wonderful job putting on this show and certainly should be commended for a job well done. It's been an incredible event, and certainly this is a great way to culminate it here in Ring B of the Prospect Steers Show here in Waco, Texas. As you can see, uh, Judge Chris Mullenix is looking over towards those last eight breed champions. There's a really good set all the way through in all 16 divisions, but... Uh, Probably going to come down to some of those cattle there on the end of the line. As you can see, that champion Simmental really looks good right there. Really coming together there for Connor Chambers. See that good-looking Monopoly there from Stock Martin there at the end of the line. He looks the part. It looks like our judge Chris Mullenix is going to pull out a few individuals uh, here to get a better look at them. Probably be his final final top uh, group of calves that will be the ones that will be in contention. It looks like the pole Hereford's going to be pulled, Colton Shackelford. The champion Shorthorn from Sage Martin. The champion Charlay from uh, Jonathan Michael Nolte. It looks like the key is going to follow behind the Charlay. That will be Cannon Goodson once again. Uh, after the key, I believe, is the champion Limousine from Stock Martin. Following the Limousine, I believe, should be the champion Maine from Jonathan Michael Nolte. And then finally, we've got that great Simmental from Connor Chambers. Sired by Troubadour. And then obviously Stock Martin on the end with the champion AOB. He was our grand champion out of ring A. So as you can see here, we've got eight calves lined up in two lines. It appears that he's gone ahead and pulled out his final eight. Uh, certainly, as you can see, all 16 of the calves really looked the part. But it's going to come down to the Pold Hereford, Shorthorn, Charlay, Key, Lemmy, Maine, Simmental, and AOB for championship honors. These will be the calves that uh, Judge Chris Mullenix picks his top five out of as you look at this group out there certainly as you appraise each calf side by side there nose to tail it looks like uh stock martin will be a player the simmental certainly will be a player the uh, main looks extremely good the charlet looks really good the shorthorn and uh pulled herford look awful good to me the limousine and the uh key look just a tick out of place Certainly extremely good calves in their own right, but they don't quite pair up as well as those calves that, at least for my opinion, look the best out there today. But certainly down the road, as uh, Judge Gerald Buck mentioned earlier in Ring A, there's probably calves that didn't even win their class that could go on and win a major show uh, the first of the next year. So these cattle are going to change so much, and certainly to win a breed division here is quite an honor. And certainly we suspect these cattle will go on to win lots and lots more shows 
throughout the summer and falling into next year's majors. So it wouldn't be surprising if a few of these calves go on to win some of the majors next year in Texas. Uh, certainly extremely high quality all the way through. As you can see, Chris Mullenix is handling that calf of Stog Martins. Uh, that is something we did not see in ring A. Gerald Buck did not put his hands on these calves. Chris Mullenix has. He's there going to that Simmental steer uh, from Connor Chambers. That's a, a really good looking calf. I would suspect he's going to be pl pleasantly surprised uh, when he gets his hands on that one. He looks to have so much shape and top. And that really looks to be the kind that would be a great slick shear and steer down the road. So I would suspect he'd be satisfied putting his hands on that one. As you can see, not quite wanting to be uh, uh, handled there today quite as nicely as you might hope. But uh, it looks like he got his hands on him long enough to see what's under the hide there. Uh, really good looking steer there, as we said. He's sort of giving him an extra look there. That may lead us to believe that uh, he'll be a major player here for top five. Obviously, Moving on down to that main from Jonathan Michael Nolte. He looks from at least up here to possibly be the biggest back steer out there in the drive. That one looks to be super shapy and uh, really be pleasing uh, when you get your hands on him as well. There's the limousine, another heavy muscle calf that uh, really uh, puts a lot of product into one package there. There comes uh, the key, really a uh, long spine, up-headed kind of calf. And then there's the Charlet that uh, really got a big old hip in him and uh, looks to be one down the road that'll be a great slick shearing type here's the one that really hits you super hard for uh, a slick shearing show i know matt papelka said a few times that he could see this one being a a major contender next year at houston uh, when you take all the hair off he's just so level on his lines and so up headed and that young lady sage martin doing a great job getting him shown that's a good looking short horn there and then obviously there's the pole herford from colton shackleford that uh, had so much success there in ring A being champion, Paul Herford in fifth overall. But uh, we're going to get these calves here on the move now. Uh, one last time, I would suspect these eight uh, finalists for top five here in ring B. As you see them going away, these cattle certainly got enough power and shape and uh, junk in the trunk, you might say. That Charlet is really big hipped. Uh, really got a lot of width from stifle to stifle. There's the key. There you see the limousine down low there. Jonathan Michael Nolte with his. Uh, champion main there comes the uh, champion Simmental that uh, was fourth overall in ring a this looks like he's getting a little bit tired out there wanting to fight the halter a little bit not uh, wanting to show himself off the best but uh, when he gets that calf put together certainly counter chambers has got an awful good one there and then there comes the calf of stock martins uh, that was champion aob and grand champion prospect in ring a so they've made their final revolution around the ring here for the last time here at Waco for the belt buckle bonanza. I would suspect these calves are getting tired. These kids are getting tired. And certainly I would suspect uh, Judge Chris Mullenix is starting to feel a little bit weathered. They've been judging all day long, and uh, he's certainly been working hard, but he's done a wonderful job. And we certainly suspect he'll find the right top five. There's certainly some differences in opinions, as we've seen from Judge uh, Gerald Buck and Ring A, but... Uh, that's what you usually expect at a show this tough. There's a lot of different directions these uh, evaluators can go when they're picking these cattle, and uh, certainly I wouldn't be disappointed with that uh, group he's got out there. They're really, really good all the way through, and uh, certainly he should be commended for doing a good job and working so well with these junior exhibitors. Obviously, uh, Chris Mullenix has judged shows all over the country. One of the most uh, foremost livestock evaluators in the world was the high point individual, I believe, in Louisville back in the early 90s so he's certainly been around the livestock judging uh, arena for a long long time being national champion himself in college so certainly very uh, well versed and skilled in this uh, profession so we'll see what he has to say here about this top five well it's uh, it's really been a pleasure here the last two days what an exciting uh, opportunity for me to be out here and uh, sort through what a great uh, just a great set of cattle and uh, you know, first of all, I, I think uh, it's important that we thank the people that make this show what it is. You know, it's the first time I've had the opportunity to come down here for the buckle, and uh, you know, it, it's unique. I, I guess uh, you know when I think about this show, and as someone who's never actually been here uh, to be a part of it, uh, I think any time, regardless of what area of your life is, you can mention kind of one word, and everybody knows what you're talking about. That tells you you've been doing something right for a long time. And when you're in livestock circles and you just say, you hear about the buffalo, they know what you're talking about. 
You might walk down the street and ask somebody about the love and they think about some clothing store. But for us in livestock circles, we know exactly what you're talking about when you mention that. And that is a credit to those people who have made this show just be the iconic show that it is. And it really is uh, exciting to be a part of it. It's uh, to those people uh, sitting up uh, up front there, and, but as importantly, the people in the back, the junior board, all the people, not only this year, but over the years that have helped develop this show uh, to the reputation and the strength that it is. It's, uh, you know, it's really a pleasure and honor for me to be part of it. But uh, it's, uh, it's iconic because of the history and the people that have made this show what it is. And if you would, help me in thanking those people that have been a part of this show this year and in uh, previous years. Outstanding. Give them a big round of applause. And it's everything I expected it to be. You know, this is, uh, it's really uh, neat for me to get this opportunity uh, to, to share my opinion, because that's really what it boils down to, uh, is, a, is one man's opinion you know, on that given day, and I'm, I'm pretty excited uh, to have had this opportunity. And I, I, I don't know if Daryl's left already, but uh, there's a gentleman that you had in ring A that I think the world of, uh, you know, he's uh, bred great ones, raised great ones, and, and is awesome in the ring and great with young people and uh, you know, we shared some thoughts last night as we ate dinner about just what we believe this program to be and it's everything that you build this show to be and that's really uh, fun for us is to get a chance you know, to share our thoughts with the young people and you know, I don't know how everything turned out in his ring and I don't know that it really matters. That's hopefully uh, the joy in doing this is getting two people's opinions back to back you know, and you know what? We all are going to have our own opinions anyhow. Probably disagree with some of the things that we've done, and, uh, and that's really what makes the world go around. You'll have another show next week, and you'll get to see these cattle as they mature and go on to majors throughout uh, the winter months, and um, it'll be exciting to see how they come together and how these cattle, uh, you know, continue to mature. Because uh, you know, in some ways, uh, it's still a little bit of a guessing game at this stage in, uh, in their life. Uh, you know, and all of these cattle are obviously in good home, but there's a lot of things that are going to happen between now and the opportunity to get these in front of some other judges at your majors. I just know that these are awesome, awesome cattle standing out here and an awesome set that went back to the barn as well. Phenomenal set of cattle, great set of young people. I congratulate you guys. The breeders that put these cattle in these uh, uh, people's hands and those that have helped get them ready, it's just uh, you've done an unbelievable job. I've kind of separated eight breed champions out here. Take nothing away from the other eight that are back there. Just the simple fact that you have a champ, breed champion at the buck tells me you've got one whale with a good steer. You've got calves that are going to continue to be extremely competitive within their breed. So we get these other eight out here. I think those are the contenders for our championship uh, and top five along with some of the reserves within their breeds. I think there's a little bit of give and take between them. Uh, yet I think all of them are really, really awesome. You know, that Herbert uh, down on the far end of our whole Herbert division, really unique, super sound, big body. Uh, a calf that I think's got some future. Gets a little relaxed out here, as you mentioned. Never going to be the biggest one, but I think a really, really nice representative of that breed. I think the short horn's going to be big time. I think that's really a neat one that's youthful and they're really, really shaped right. Super attractive when we get it parked on the side. Not overly stout, but I'm actually one of the thinner hair calves that's out here. But I think if you really analyze that calf, he is built extra, extra good. Maybe just a tick tighter in motion than some, but uh, that man pretty nifty. Yeah, I think that's an excellent calf. Charlotte Camp, uh, really like him. I love his hip and high bike. So flexible and good. He runs downhill a little bit, uh, can open a touch in his shoulder, but so good body, so stout. Really, really good leg, and I like that cat a bunch. This steer that won the keys maybe comes off a little more extreme in his look when we get him out here. But boy, he's attractive. He's so long bodied and neat fronted. Again, one that handles that and pretty attractive hip and hind leg and get him in motion. He's sure good enough. Built out of a little different mold than some of those out here, but a good one nonetheless. Steer the one our Lindy's just uh, doesn't he look like a, a fat steer in the making? I just love his body type, his rib shape, his mass. You know, as we get him back out here, we mentioned a couple of little things even within his breed uh, that we can tinker with in his structure. And obviously, it's been a long day, so those are getting uh, accentuated a little bit further as we get him back out here. But I think that's a uh, 
good dude. His main steer, uh, that came out of a tough division, two steers that were really, really good there, and he holds himself together in the hunt out here, no question. A little bigger shoulder, but from their back, really powerful, really good in his lines. I love this Semitol steer. You know, he's, uh, he's one that really uh, that builds a great uh, look here from the side. He's super correct in his lines. Really, really good footed. Can get out and well over yet. He's still got an awfully good shape to him. Super attractive and neat up front. He's not going to be the biggest steer in the world when it's all said and done, but I think he's got plenty of grow left in him. I think he's one that sure deserves a look out here. That's awfully, awfully complete. And then that uh, AOB steer, another one. Boy, you get him parked here on the side. He's just uh, uh, an awesome steer to look at. Really, really correct in terms of his lines. Really attractive up front. So uniform and good. And that body depth, the calf that you get in behind him, he's got plenty of muscle. He's not the heaviest muscle calf out here. Maybe you can change him just a little bit the way he pulls or swings that hip just a touch as he goes away from the implants in that hind leg, but still plenty sound in his structure as well. That's just a rocket set of steers there. Awesome, awesome breed champions. Guys, you deserve uh, just a tremendous amount of credit. If you would, help me in congratulating all these young people that are out here. I love this set of steers. They're going to have a lot of fun with them. I'm going to take one more look, but again, it's just, uh, it's been a privilege for me to be here. I, I, I love the opportunity to work with young people. And then when you put this kind of caliber of cattle in, uh, at the end of the halter, it just, uh, it really becomes fun and, and humbling from a judge's perspective to get a chance to be out here uh, and put together a, a championship lineup in top five for you. Really been a blast. I've enjoyed the last two days. Again, thank you to, uh, thanks to the entire group for having me here. Uh, if you would, one more time before we select our champion, thank those people that run this show and those that have been in the ring helping for us. They've done a great job. Before we select our grand champions in Ring B of the Prospect Steer Show at the 2012 Belt Buckle Bonanza, we'd once again like to thank all of our sponsors who make this coverage possible here on Livestock World, including our supreme sponsor, Sullivan Supply. Be sure to check out SullivanSupply.com. All of our corporate sponsors, Executive Sires, Quaker Hill Farm, Willow Springs Club Calves, Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, FatSteer.com, and Garwood Cattle Company, as well as our show sponsor, Troush Farms. Thank you to once again to our sponsors for all their continued support. We're now getting closer and closer to the top five selections here in Ring B by Judge Chris Melanix. Obviously, once again, he's got those eight calves pulled out to the left. Uh, those will be the top eight contenders, the elite eight, elite eight you might say. Uh, he's starting up there with the pole herd for just off of the screen, the Shorthorn there, the Charlet, the Key, the Limousine, the Main, the Simmental, and the um, Champion AOB there from Stock Martin. So. Uh, quite a group of calves there that are in contention for championship honors for the top five here in Ring B of the Prospect Steer Show. Uh, off to the bottom of the screen are the other eight breed champions. Uh, certainly a, a very good set there in their own right, but uh, probably just giving up a little bit of horsepower as compared to those cattle that uh, stand above them there. But uh, as you see Judge Chris Molinix moving up towards the line, uh, looking there towards the Pold Herford, the Shorthorn, the Charlet, the Key. Back towards the Lemmy, the main, there's the semi and the, and the AOB. It's probably going to come down to that semi or the AOB. Our judge talked those two cows about as good as any of them. He's moving towards the semi. And, yes, it's going to be the champion Simmental to be grand champion prospect steer in ring B. Congratulations to Connor, Connor Chambers. That's an extremely good calf there. He was fourth You're overall in ring A, so congratulations to Connor. Big win there for that calf. Once again, sired by Troubadour. And raised by Lou and Kabbalah. Really, really good one right there. Great slick shear prospect for down the road. The reserve Simmental should be coming here momentarily, but uh, probably uh, it's going to come down once again to that calf there from uh, Stock Martin for reserve or that main from Jonathan McAnulty. Those two steers, the black steers on the end of the line there, look really, really good as you see there on the pose. And uh, you certainly can't forget about the short horn. Up there, up the front of the line, a little bit off to the screen there. But once again, the champion's going to be that Simmental from Counter Chambers. An outstanding steer, certainly a very deserving, a really, really good prospect. So congratulations to Counter. Judge Chris Molinix is going to be Stock Martin for reserve. Congratulations to Stock. It's a great one right there. Monopoly sired steer raised by Brian Martin Show Cattle. Uh, once again, full brother to the champion steer at the Iowa State Fair last year. And the reserve national champion steer in Louisville for Ashton Geyer. So 
a great calf there. He was grand champion in ring A, going to be reserve in ring B, so a great day there for Stock Martin and his show steer. Uh, that reserve AOB should be coming in momentarily. I believe that's another steer from Jonathan Michael Nolte. That's that extremely unique uh, lone wolf sired calf that uh, topped one of Brandon Horn's sales there earlier this spring. As you see him coming on the screen there, that one's about as big bone and big footed. And Stato made as a calf you might see there as a reserve AOB. Probably not quite as uh, complete uh, as far as his front end's concerned as compared to that calf from Stock Martin. But as far as his sheer power and shape, that white steer or smoke steer up the top of the screen walking across, he's a, he's a powerhouse, a really good one there. So he could be a player as well. But uh, we've got the top two pick. Connor Chambers wins it. Stock Martin Reserve. Looks like our judge may have made his mind up moving towards that main. And, yes, it's going to be Jonathan Michael Nolte with his champion main steer to be third overall. He goes third overall in both rings, ring A and ring B today. So congratulations to Jonathan. Coming in is Justin Rico there with his reserve main. Looks like uh, our judge moving that way. And, yes, it's going to be Justin Rico for fourth overall. So that was a quick pick there. Uh, for fourth overall from Judge uh, Chris Melnick. So Justin Rico wins, or excuse me, reserve in Justin ring Rico. A, fourth overall, ring B. And our Judge Chris Mullenix has finished his top five. It's going to be Sage Martin with her short horn. So there's your top five. A great show. Congratulations to all the winners. Ring B, 2012 belt buckle completed.